fundraising, I think the biggest reservoir you need to have in your heart and your gut is the ability to take rejections. So I remember our founder for Comchess, Dr. Yi Ping Liang, and uh, his message that, you know, if you are actually asking for a cause and the money is going to the charities to help people that are disadvantaged and, and underprivileged, you ought to be very thick-skinned and, and there's no shame in asking. So I took it in good spirit and practiced it and I realised that it is really, it works. Growing up in a very simple and modest family and living in a HDB three-room flat for most of my life, uh, in my neighbourhood was mostly two and three-room flat uh, housings. I was just very sensitive to the brokenness that I see in families in my immediate community uh, due to uh, problems like drugs like gambling, like abuse and other social problems. So in 2001, I joined the National Council of Social Service, an area that is closer to my heart. Before that, I was uh, just practicing my accountancy. Our donors are captivated by her because she's very willing to help. She's got a good personality, very jovial, and been able to spot people's needs and match them. I've always had a soft spot for children with special needs. For example, Singtel has been supporting community chairs for about 20 years by the time I head up uh, Comchess. At that point, they were uh, specifically uh, raising funds for about 2-3 million. That was really great support for special education children. And for special education children's program, it ends at the age 18. We wanted to try something pioneering called an enabling village then because we want to enable in a community setting sheltered, supported employment, but it's enabling. Then I stretched their imagination to where their aspirations are and I said, you know, these children have been investing in the last two decades with us, they're growing up. And they need that support, they need that booster to transit into adulthood. It took many months to discuss this project, but in the end we got one million additional donations from Singtel for the neighbouring village. It's just genuine sharing from the heart with clear facts and data and information. She's just able to make use of very scarce resources to create something really different and very new and very, very heartfelt. So we remember when we were in school, she would always make um, little gifts for us when we do project work, she will always be the one working with her hands, working with very little resources and actually making new and amazing stuff. So I think she actually brings a lot of that in her current work as well. I value how people feel when they are going about a job a lot. And I spend a lot of time uh, with my people to know their strength, their vulnerabilities. In our work in fundraising, we also facilitate volunteerism. But I felt that sustainable, regular volunteerism is very important. I felt that, you know, I need to lead my very busy contrast work team staff to believe that it can be done. I challenge them, don't just do a charity event for them. Go into the classes and support the teachers on a regular basis. My image of her is always a very happy with you know, like loud, joyful laughter. That's a very strong image that I have of her. Mm, you know, hearty. So it's just very hearty. You can feel that the laughter is from within. It's no special power. Because of my interest in people, I like to listen to their views. I like to listen to what they think about what we are discussing. And I'm also very curious. So there was uh, a period where she was facing a lot of uh, uh, pressure. So she. Uh, one day, in the usual routine of uh, talking to our son before he sleeps, she was just sharing uh, her day and how tired or, or weary she is. And I think um, when my son uh, replied, you know, hey mom, if you don't do it, who will? And I think that kind of like suddenly gave her that spurt of energy and that renewed passion to continue what she's doing.